Hey there. Welcome back to Marketing Matchmaker. Today, I have a super interesting guest because it's really different than um, some of the guests I've had in the past in what he does. So as most of you know, you know, this podcast has really been around a lot of coaching and consulting and service providers. And yet there's a whole vast world of businesses out there online that you can actually make money at. So I've invited Chris Miles onto the show today to tell us his story about how he actually created a job that allowed his wife or business, I should say, that allowed his wife to be a stay-at-home mom and for them to actually create wealth in their life and in their business. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks so much for joining me today. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. I really do appreciate the time and uh, to be able to um, chat about some my favorite thing in the world, which is entrepreneurship. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I know entrepreneurship um, is a very broad subject. And I think people oftentimes forget that there are other things out there that you could do that could make you money, um, sometimes in your spare time or sometimes in just a different way. So I love your story. So let's start there. Let's just share your story with the audience of, of kind of how you got to where you're at right now. Yeah, definitely. So um, in the very beginning, it was just me and my wife and um, we had, you know, okay jobs. They weren't the greatest jobs in the world, but they kept the bills paid, you know, and, but we were one of those, uh, I think there's a statistic out there that says um, like 70 or 80% of Americans can't take on a thousand dollar emergency without going into debt. And that's where we were, uh, like probably times 10, you know, <laughs> to be honest. So if anything happened, like car broke down, something broke on the house, yada, 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 we would have been in trouble, you know, and that's the kind of life. But we were, it's funny, you kind of get okay with that, right? You just live with it and just, this is just the way life is. Uh, and that's kind of how it was. But then we found out that we were pregnant with our first son, Benji is his name. Um, and my wife expressed to me that she wanted to stay home with them full time. And I remember thinking to myself, like, man, we can't afford that. Like, no, you got to at least have a part time job or something. But she kind of sat me down, looked at me and said, no, you need to figure this out. I was like, ah, so I had to become like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, put on my big boy pants overnight, I guess. <laughs> so um, I went online and I Googled, you know, what most people do is uh, how to make money online. And you can only imagine the cesspool of stuff that pops up, Jennifer, oh, <laughs> when, you, when you Google how to make money <laughs> online, right? So um, a lot of stuff popped up. I tried a lot of things, to be honest. And some of it made okay money. Some of it was a scam. You know, some of it didn't work out very well at all. Um, but I did eventually stumble across blogging and affiliate marketing. Um, I loved, I fell in love with the business model itself. And uh, once I started kind of jumping into that full force, I kind of had my back against the wall. So it like it had to work. So when I just kept plugging away, plugging away within about 12 months, I was making a really decent amount of money. Um, 18 months in, I was able to have my wife quit her job. About two years later, um, well, two years in, I should say. So from 18 to 24 months, I was able to quit. And uh, that was, I think, fall of 2018. So now we're at around four and a half years of just doing this just for fun, you know. And it's really awesome because now I can set my own schedule. I can work when I want. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the best things, Jennifer, is going to the grocery store at like 1030 in the morning. There's nobody there. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the greatest part about what I do. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's, I that's basically that's, us in a nutshell. That's why we all got into business. Most people anyway, got into business was so that we could set our own schedule. We could be our own bosses and do those those things, whether it's something simple like going to the grocery store or taking our family to the beach for the week and being able to work from there or not. Exactly. Um, that true so, laptop lifestyle, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a fabulous um, story. So tell me a little bit more about how does this work? How does blogging and affiliate marketing work? Yeah. It's funny when most people, I have a weird elevator pitch, you know, it's kind of weird. I jump into an elevator and someone says, Hey, what do you do? Really? It's very rare that someone understands you know, what right? I'm doing. <laughs> But and it but because essentially I'm a blogger, right? And that's that's what I do. I I blog. And people are like, wait a second, like you mean you just write about what you did every day? You know what you do? Like, cause that's what blogging was in 2008, you know? Right. <laughs> kind of a blogging. But that's not the type of blogging we do. The type of blogging where people just talk about 
they went to the gym, they cooked their favorite dish, you know, whatever. That died in 2008, 2009. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, now the new way of blogging is to serve a purpose, right? Is to answer common questions on um, in, a, in a space about a particular topic, right? So for example, um, I might have, I was just looking at a student site yesterday he has a kayak site all right and he had a pretty funny um a pretty funny title it was like how does a plus size person fit in a kayak you were like that's a weird question to ask but when you go to google and you type it in it's auto completed right and when something's auto completed within google that means other people are asking it too right so because of that you can write an article answering that question especially when you know, you might Google something and maybe you don't find a good answer. Maybe you find a forum and you have to figure out what Sally123 thinks about the subject. Or maybe you'll find like uh, 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 Reddit or Quora or something like that, where you got to dig through a whole bunch of garbage to try to find the right answer. And you kind of have to figure out your own answer for yourself, right? At the end of the day, that's not a very good experience, right? But if you were to create a blog post that succinctly answered the question to the point, and then provide it maybe some additional information if you'd like to the point to where if someone lands on that article, they have every question answered that they would ever need regarding that particular subject. That's called satisfying the search intent, because that's the reason that someone Googled that phrase to begin with. So when you do that, you get eyeballs on that page. So that's where the fun really kind of jumps in, right? When you create content answering these common questions, you're now getting an audience of people who obviously wouldn't be on that page unless they were interested in that topic, which means now you can give them targeted offers, you know, to say, hey, if you like kayaks, you might like this cool harness or strap or something that will help right. you, you know, work on it. And you can promote that within your content. You do have to do it, you know, I don't want to say slyly, but you want to you want to answer the question and then suggest it, you know, kind of like right. a commercial. Right. So as long as you do that correctly, you can make affiliate revenue from that. And um, another way to monetize is with display ads. Display ads are those uh, annoying pictures of advertisements <laughs> that you see on a website. Right. But the reason you see them all the time is because it pays the website money and it doesn't hurt the experience too much, to be honest, based on the data that I've seen. So um, those are the, probably the primary ways that you will monetize a site with affiliate marketing and with blogging. And yet you can see how I couldn't say all of that in an elevator. In an right? elevator pitch. Yeah, that's a really long thing. But here's the thing that I think um, your skills sets you apart and also provides, especially my audience with something. It's the idea that creating content that satisfies the question then allows your people that are reading it to want to buy something, whether from you or for someone you suggest. But doing this type of content creation, this type of blogging really can help um, create momentum in your website, create you know, followers create people that are are coming just to to look at at your website itself, um, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people miss when we talk about content creation. Yeah, I can agree. Um, you know, if you think about it, um, imagine you know when you're watching TV, you know, you or you know, I don't know, does anyone watch TV anymore? They just stream everything <laughs> nowadays, right? But when you watch TV, uh, you know, let's just say you're watching like one of my favorite shows is Chopped. I can watch Chopped. All day, long. all day long. I, I don't know why. I agree with I'm not you, my friend. <laughs> I'm not even a good cook, Jennifer, but I just love watching Chopped, right? Now my wife, she's like an expert chef pretty much. Um <laughs> she calls the stuff before they even do it. I mean, that's another subject. But regardless, when you're watching Chopped, when the commercials start, what kind of commercials do you normally see? It's food based usually or something like that. Sh cooking utensils, something surrounding yeah. the show itself. Exactly. Knives or whatever, you know, whatever. It, that's typically what they're around. So why don't you see those types of commercials on a kid's show or on e-entertainment news or something like that, right? It's because those manufacturers of those food-based products know that if you're watching Chop, 
you probably like food, <laughs> you know? Right. So because of that, you're in a uh, a targeted audience, you know? So you can show advertisements to that person. It's the exact same thing really anywhere that you create content, right? As long as you're creating content that draws a particular type of person, you can find some way to monetize them by uh, uh, promoting products that they would be interested in more likely than somebody who doesn't like cooking at all, right? So you just have to be creative, know the type of person who's coming to your content and then um, find a way to monetize them. There's an old saying that if you're, if the content is free, that means you're the product. <laughs> you know? True. Yeah. You know, so uh, when people are watching this content for free and then, Hey, now we can, you know, build up what's called that, uh, the KLT, the no like and trust factor. Right. If you know me and you like me and you are looking for information on how to do something, because you maybe you watch my face every day because on YouTube or maybe you read my blog every day because you like the content I'm creating. When you do decide to jump into becoming a cook or something like that, you I'm going to be the first person on top of mind, which means I'm going to have an opportunity to promote more things to you, maybe a course or coaching or yada, yada, yada. So creating content, especially free content, is like the greatest way to draw people, especially in this day and age. And a lot of people don't see it as such. And because right. of that, they are missing out on a huge, huge opportunity of pretty much getting free leads from your free content. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it's one of those things that I, I talk about a lot is, is content is really how you communicate. People aren't knocking on your brick and mortar door anywhere anymore trying to find a widget. Now they're looking yeah. online and your content is how it's going to attract them to you. So one of the things that you said earlier was if you searched on Google, um, you'd find answer, you know, you started searching and Google kind of filled in. What are some ways for people to find the questions that they need to answer when it comes to whatever it is they're serving up? Yeah, no, that's an excellent question, Jennifer. You know, typically what I tell people to start off with is what questions are, you know, people asking you all the time. If you're in your industry and you're, you know, actively participating in it, and then you're probably getting the same questions just probably phrased different ways, right? So you're becoming Google yourself, right? People are right. asking you the same question, but, and then now, instead of always answering that question, you can refer someone to a resource, you know? So that would probably be the number one place I would start off is just answering common questions in your space that you're already being asked all the time. Now, to find more questions in your space to figure out things that maybe you can't think of or maybe other questions and stuff that you just don't know exist, you go to Google. And this is free, by the way. You just go to Google and you type in your niche. So let's just say, I don't know, using golf as an example, because we mentioned it earlier. So, um, or that may have been before we started recording. Right. But <laughs> yeah. So uh, I have a I have a golf blog, right? And I just, I review products. I talk about other common golf questions and things of that nature. So um, you would go find something like golf shoes, right? So I would go to Google and type in golf shoes. But before I press enter, I'm going to move the cursor to the front of golf shoes and then type in how and a space. So now it says how golf shoes, basically. Um, but I'm still not going to press enter. And what's, what you're going to notice is that at the bottom, a whole bunch of things are going to autocomplete. A whole bunch of questions with how and golf in the title, because Google is trying to guess what it is you're looking for. Um, typically with that, um, that drop down box, the things that are higher up are the things that are searched most often, right? So because of that, I can do how, or I can do should I, or how come, or can I, or you know, things like that, and just keep replacing it over and over again. And literally, you can get hundreds of different types of ideas for content to create on your website that's going to draw your ideal customer because it's about golf, right? Or it's about whatever your topic happens to be in. So take a seed word or a, a common phrase within your space, punch it in Google, and then put the keyword in front, or sorry, put the cursor in front, and then just type a whole bunch of question type words, and then see what Google Auto suggests. Eventually, when you find one that you like, actually press answer <laughs> and then look at the uh, look at the first 10 results and see if the content that's out there, can you create something better? And that's yeah. basically all it is. Yeah. Oftentimes, even if it's not better necessarily, sometimes it's just your voice and having your yes. spin on it, which makes all the difference because better or worse is relative. 
However, people are attracted to, like you said, to begin with, if your content is free, you are the product. People are attracted to you and how you talk about things. Um, so exactly. I, I know you have a, a podcast and, and a YouTube channel. Um, so tell the audience about that. Like, how can they um, find out some more information about this topic in general? Yeah, I um, appreciate it. So yeah, uh, the podcast is called The Blogger Evolution, right? So it's The Blogger Evolution Podcast. Be sure to go check it out, subscribe, really would appreciate it. So uh, there we talk about um, building passive income streams that work for you so you don't have to. That's kind of the, the, the line that we have there. Because the cool thing about blogging is once you kind of build it up and it's running, you know, it's kind of like building up a house. It is tough to get it going. But once it's going, you're kind of just you know, changing the gutters every now and then, changing the doorknob, you know, stuff like that. So once the site's up and running, it can get you a, a decent amount of money each month without you having to actively work on it, uh, which is cool. And we show people how to do that all the time there. And then also have um, the YouTube channel as well. Just look up The Passive Income Dad. And, uh, you know, we again, we talk about really uh, blogging, niche blogging, affiliate marketing, um, display ads, pretty much anything to help grow up a blog. I love it. And and quite honestly, I think, again, I'm going to circle back to the point that a lot of people think content has to be difficult, and it doesn't. And there are great ways you can go about not only monetizing your website and your blog, but also monetizing your business or providing information for your audience that makes you the product, service, or solution that people are looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if I may, right quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, blogging. I mean, not blogging, but content creation. Yeah. It's not hard because uh, I think I forgot who it was. Jim Rohn, I think, said that uh, what's easy to do is also easy not to do. And, yes. and when it comes to creating content, creating content actually isn't terribly difficult to do. It's just kind of tedious, you know, yes. and but once you have the right mindset of knowing that, OK, I'm going to just create content as much as possible. You know, then you just do it. And then after a while, once you start to make some income, um, instead of just, you know, throwing it in your pocket, reinvest in your business and then start to hire writers to do it for you. You know, I run about five different blogs, but I don't write every article in every single blog because there's just not enough time in the day. Right. So um, I take a lot of, you know, the money that I do earn from my business and I just throw it at um, at writers to write the content for me. I still do the research as to what types of articles they should be writing. But once I give them the ideas, they write the content and then they post it and I don't have to do it. And uh, I end up saving time and money. So th that's just one way to kind of work on your business rather than in your business. So from a perspective, when it comes to blogging, about how often should someone blog in order to create momentum in their website? Yeah, that's a good question because um, I get that all the time. Um, usually, it's not like YouTube or a podcast where people tune in waiting for your next stuff usually in that, in that situation. So you probably do need to have a consistent cadence you know, of the content that you are creating. With a blog, especially when you're first starting off, I would just post as much as humanly possible as you can until you get up to around 30 to 50 articles. Once you get to that point, then you could probably slow it down to maybe once a week, twice a week, you know, that, that you would need, but just something consistent. But I have found that when you kind of hit Google with a nice fever pitch early in the blog's life, um, it really does help with seeing some massive gains, you know, um, as the content starts to rank in Google and get traffic to your site. So I guess the best answer to that would be it, it depends because it also <laughs> depends on your time and money as well. Um, a lot of people who get started with this kind of business, especially with blogging and niche websites, they already have nine to fives and families and it's tough to kind of fit in you know, oh yeah, you need to do 50 articles in the next month. You know, I mean, you don't have time to do that usually. So I tell people, if you could just get on a consistent cadence of um, one to two articles a week, by the time you get to a year, you're going to have a hundred articles, you know, 50 to a hundred articles, which is a great basis for a blog. Um, it's a long game. I, I won't lie. It's not, you're not going to do this and then overnight be a millionaire, but if you do it enough, consistently long enough, you know, it might take you, you know, 18 to 24 months, at which point you're going to have an asset that's generating you a few thousand dollars a month that you don't have to actively work on every single moment of the day. Um, and that's not too bad. You know, you're telling me I can go from zero to five thousand dollars a month in two months, in two years, and it gets to the point to where I don't have to work on it very often. 
I'll take that every single day, you know, um, especially when my original plan might have been working for 30 years and then hopefully <laughs> I have enough time and I have enough health and income to be able to enjoy it when I'm done. I'll take two <laughs> anything less than 30 years should be a bonus. <laughs> That's awesome. I appreciate that comment it, immensely because you are correct in, in um, I think people tend to uh, look at things as very short-term gains, right? Everybody wants instant gratification. And when you're looking for long-term business growth, sometimes it doesn't happen in an instant. Sometimes it takes a year or two, and then you have that, that momentum going. So yeah, I don't want to get all philosophical on you, but it's one of the things you get used to that working a nine to five, right? Yeah. And you work and you get paid. You know, you work and you get paid. You work in two weeks later, you're you're probably getting a paycheck. With this stuff, you're gonna work for probably four to six months, you know, before you see your first hundred bucks or something, right? But the thing is, after six months to a year, that time now turns into a few hundred bucks, maybe even a thousand dollars. And then after 12 months, it'll probably jump to two or three thousand dollars or more. Um, so it goes up exponentially, but we do have to have that that time delay, you know, to get right. to that point. Right. So a more technical question when it comes to writing blogs, are you also looking at SEO when it comes to these kind of things and and that kind of um, like how are you getting your your blogs to rank on Google? Yeah, 100 um, percent. Search engine optimization or SEO is the way to go. Um, when and when you're looking at it from like a business perspective, Jennifer, it, it's like the amount of money that you put into Facebook ads or Instagram ads or something, you know, you, you get a return. You know, I, I used to run ads all the time. I would consistently get three to four ROI you know, in terms of ad spend, which is pretty good. You know, yeah. back in the day, it used to be, you know, 10, 20, sometimes depending on the offer. But, um, you know, but nowadays, you know, it's hard to get returns any bigger than two or three sometimes unless you really have things dialed in. So um, when it comes to SEO, however, when you're creating content, you SEO your articles, um, meaning that you write them in a way to where it's easier for Google to understand them and present them to the right audience. You know, I might spend, like, I'll give you an example for a, a niche site. I might pay a writer 50 bucks to write an article. All right. That's like a thousand or so word article about a topic. They give it back to me. Um, I'll, I'll either edit it or have my editor do it, post it, done with it. They get 50 bucks. They're done. Um, when I put display ads on that page, and if I have affiliate marketing going on that page, that page will pay for itself within about four to six months. Um, after it pays for itself and then faster as the site gets older. But uh, in, after four to six months, I make 50 bucks back on that article, which means every day after that is pure profit, right? right. So, uh, but you just have to be able to float that money if you can. And some articles are going to underperform, but then other articles are going to kick it out of the park, you know? Can you kick out a park? Hit it out of the park. <laughs> so it really just, just, just depends. But when you look at it from a money perspective, SEO is probably going to give you the best ROI than anything, you know, in my outside of just strictly free content. But the free content should be SEO, right? So um yeah, if you are able to, you know, float some money into SEO, then you're going to have a much better bigger return on investment that just continues to pay you over and over and over again. So it's a big missed opportunity by a lot of businesses though. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I think, I think obviously I've run a, a marketing agency where pay, we do pay traffic on a regular basis and love it. And that's our primary. That being said, when it's layered with SEO and that organic traffic, it really can help boost your business faster than anything else. Especially I with always, retargeting and stuff, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it, it helps tremendously. I think people think that you only do one tactic. Reality is in marketing, you do a multi-layer approach. So yeah. yeah, go ahead. As we get to the end of the show, I, ha I have a question for you. What was the biggest marketing mistake you made in your business and what happened from that? Yeah, the biggest marketing mistake. This is, um, this is a fun one, right? So <laughs> um, when I first got into this whole blogging thing, you know, I was like most people, I was like, oh, yeah, all the content's free on YouTube. Let me just find it there and just go. So I went on YouTube and I found a guy that I liked. His name was uh, the Lazy Stoner. All right. So he had, a, <laughs> he had an interesting name. But now, granted, I was brand new in marketing at the time and I didn't understand that that was just his shtick. Right. That's mm -hmm. just what he was leaning on. 
he wanted to show people that he's making all of this money and he gets to, you know, smoke on the side, you know? So right. it's like, so what I, I was, I mean, I don't smoke particularly, but I was drawn into that idea of, okay, if he can do it, I know I can do it because right. he's just this lazy stoner, right? So <laughs> I started following all of his videos, continue watching him and um, rewatched like almost every video he ever posted, basically. And he would basically share how he was building up these blogs and making money with them. So I just w watched a video and then I would just regurgitate it onto my own blog and just did it over and over again. Um, so I finally worked weeks and weeks and weeks and got this blog set up the way that it needed to be set up. Um, pressed publish on the site and just sat back and crossed my arms, right? And just waited for the money to just come rolling in. And as you guessed it, no money came rolling in at all. <laughs> in fact, um, I, I became desperate at one point and I went to Fiverr and I started paying some random guy uh, to overseas to send a ton of traffic to my site. And I was like, okay, if he sends 10,000 people, if 1% of that converts, I should be able to make some good money with that, yada, yada, yada. So I did all of that. And because of that, I ended up getting my site uh, what's called de-indexed or taken out of the oh, Google index no. where you can't even, you can't, you couldn't even find my site on Google anymore. And it was because I was doing a lot of these backhanded tactics that you shouldn't be doing. Right. But the thing was, this was the things that he was teaching. So I was like, well, how was this, how was this possible? Well, later on, after I kind of came to my senses and realized what was going on, um, the art, the videos that I was watching were actually very old. Um, at the time, they were like two and three years old. And in SEO, SEO changes all the time. Like yes. day to day, it seemingly SEO changes. So I was following a lot of stuff that, yeah, worked three years ago, but now I'm trying to do it and it's still not working. But the thing is, his content is still out there. And that was seven years ago. So his content out there is like 10 years old right now. And it's seemingly still getting views as people are finding it. And they're probably doing the same thing that I'm doing, not knowing that what they're following is a is 10 years old, you know? So yeah. uh, that was probably one of the biggest mistakes. So what I ended up learning from that is just, yeah, free content is great, but it's probably best to invest in yourself and actually find someone who's doing it right now. Like they just posted videos yesterday, yeah. you know, still talking about <laughs> what's going on, you know, see if they have anything to to provide, um, you know, purchase into their free stuff and their uh, 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 content and get something that's nice and curated, like like right there, one, two, three, do this, this, and this, and you should expect this type of result. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess the biggest mistake I had was not investing in myself sooner. I love that answer. I love that answer um, because I think most people, especially when it comes to marketing, do either what you did, which is follow people that worked 10 years ago, like a lot of the big gurus that you see in, in social media and on YouTube, what they did 10 years ago was great. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> work today. Um, or they just don't invest in marketing upfront. Like they, yeah. they think it's a, a nice to have rather than a must have. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with you. Investing in yourself and investing in your business is the sooner you do it, the better results you're going to get. Yeah. Marketing is amazing. Like I, I, I truly fell in love with marketing. I must say, cause it's just like, I can't even, I don't know. You probably are the same way. I can't even watch a commercial nowadays without breaking it down. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. Absolutely. I see what they did here. I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like, I'm like the worst person to like pitch like a, a, a timeshare to, you know, they get you in that room and they try to use all high pressure cell attack. Like, no, I see what you did there. Yep. I know what you did there. Right there. No, you're not going to fool me. I'm like the worst cool. person. In my I, am, I am with you on that. It is so, I do that with my family all the time. I'm like, they just did. And they're like, we don't care. Well, they don't. And that's what's, <laughs> that's what's the funny part. It's like, no, you're right. No one cares because most people <laughs> consume content pretty passively, right? They don't really think too much about it. It's just, it's it's there, you know, yeah. but when you're on this side, you know, creating podcasts, creating blogs, YouTube channels, whatever, you have to go from the consumer mindset to the producer mindset. And uh, once you do that, then it's like the whole world opens up to you because you now you see all of the tactics, you know, even something as simple as, you know, a coupon to a grocery store in the newspaper. That's their lead magnet to get you into the store. Exactly. Right? Once you're in the store, they put it way in the back or it's something like that. So you have to go through the store. It like it's all calculated. Yet it no is. one has any idea that is going on. <laughs> I know. And that's I I often compare, you know, because I talk about funnels a lot. Yeah. Um, because that's one of the things that we do. And I always say everybody has a funnel. Even Walmart has a funnel. Like yeah. 
they, bring, they just don't call it a funnel. <laughs> they don't, but it still is just, just like you said, they bring you in with that ad, but they, the way they set up the store is designed to funnel you to what it is they really want you to buy. Yeah. If you, if you ever really want like a very interesting, um, uh, like YouTube videos and stuff to watch, like Google the psychology of grocery stores. It's insane how much numbers is in that. And you're being manipulated the second you walk in the door. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think I, and from, from marketers who spend all of our time in marketing, we recognize these things um, and it's, it's hysterical and so fun. And it also allows us to share with our audience <laughs> these things as well. So that yeah. you can kind of see from a different perspective. So. Exactly. You know, something as simple as the milk always is in the back of the store, you know, and that's because okay, everyone needs milk. Yep. You Red go milk through the rest of the store Those to get are the there. three things people go for. And that's usually they're at three different areas of the store. <laughs> it's crazy when you think about it, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks for being on the show, Chris. It was so much fun to talk about this this perspective on um, content creating and really uh, even just marketing in general. So I appreciate you joining me today. And for those of you out there that are looking for more information on how to create great content, head over to Chris's YouTube channel or his podcast and and listen in and see what you might be able to learn. I will have all of his links in the show notes below. From this point, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. And if you're looking to grow your business, increase your revenue and scale your impact, and you need a little help, head over to yourmarketingmatchmaker.com and sign up for a free exploration call. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to Apple iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, Connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.